Hello everyone, I'm at Mitch Ritz, the Alternate Historian. Thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. I'm really, really happy about this. I, I can barely find the words to really express how grateful I am that you guys not only stuck with me, but gave me a chance, and it, it, it's, it's just amazing. So um, without further ado, I'm going to get to um, answering some of your questions. Uh, I just want to do get... I just want to take care of a few uh, sort of like new business before we go. Uh, first off, I'm going off script, so if I seem like I don't know what I'm saying or I'm constantly umming and eyeing and things like that, it's because <laughs> I'm really just treating this like uh, like we would be like a, in some sort of like convention at a panel and just asking me random questions. So I thought it would make it things a little bit more honest, uh, but also might think make things a little bit more chaotic. Uh, additionally. I had to make an executive decision because I got so many questions, often from the same person uh, or people, <laughs> that I had to just, for time length and things like that, I had to just sort of decide to only go with one question per person. So my apologies for anybody who doesn't get all their questions answered. Uh, a lot of the questions I chose not to answer were like, what ifs, or are you going to review this uh, sort of uh, questions? and. Uh, I usually don't take requests unless you're a patron. Uh, patron, <laughs> patron. Uh, so if you go to my Patreon page and uh, sign up, you will get the option to ask me to do those kind of things. Uh, I have revamped the page in honor of 2,000 subscribers. Uh, so please go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, there's some great prizes. There's some uh, great uh, rewards uh, you get for becoming one of my patrons, and it helps keep the channel going. It helps me put out more videos that are of better quality. Without any further ado, any any more ado, double ado, no more ado, here's the first question and answer. Friendly Mango asks, what is your job? I am a conflicts attorney uh, at a firm in the city of Chicago. It's my job to make sure that when... Um, firm attorneys take on new matters that they don't have any conflicts of interest that would prevent them from working on this matter. It's all involving the rules of professional responsibility that all attorneys across the country uh, have to uh, work by. And so it's my job to enforce those, <laughs> or at the least at the, not enforce them per se, but more just to make sure that if their conflicts of interest do exist that they're taken care of by getting waivers, establishing up ethical walls, etc, etc. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do for a living. This is what I do for fun, and, uh, uh, and I have a blast doing it. Sean Wong asks, would you prefer an empire or a republic? Um, I don't think uh, an empire and republic are necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, for example, if you look at the map of the Republic of Rome, uh, right before the death of uh, Julius Caesar, you'll notice that it's actually rather large and contains much of what would become the, the Roman Empire already. Um, and then if you for a more current example, you can look at the United States, which for just in, for geographics alone is, is a pretty, uh, pretty large country. And then in terms of power projection, the fact that you know we have troops in pretty much every continent and military bases and massive fleets constantly patrolling the oceans, um, even though we don't have an emperor, we seem to mass uh, power and also project power like an empire would. So again, not mutually exclusive. Now, if you're looking at it in terms of all power uh, of the state centralized into one uh, authoritarian figure, then no, I don't prefer that. I actually prefer uh, a republic. Uh, I do like democracy. So yes, I guess if that's the definition of empire for you, then I am going to go with republic. Bajnet Bison asks, ever thought about writing an AH book? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I have several unfinished ones on my computer. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough writing, sometimes finding the time to write and also staying motivated. My biggest issue is, is that I'll get really excited about a story, spend a couple weeks uh, adding to it and outlining it and researching it and writing it and all that kind of stuff and then just get bored and move on to a different project. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons why I started to blog is that I wanted a project, my first blog being Alternate History Weekly Update, because I wanted uh, something that I would keep going uh, for a long period of time. And I did five years. Uh, this channel right now, though, is my primary source of getting out to people. And uh, hopefully I can go uh, even longer than five years and reach out even more people. So um, I do have uh, several ideas in various stages of uh, completeness. Uh, I am thinking of starting actually again, trying again, because it's been a while since I've actually have worked on a novel of any form. And uh, it, also to let you know if it goes anywhere or if it just remains sort of a, a dream on my hard drive. The Info Hub asks, 
what are some good alternate history books to read to start getting into the genre? Uh, that's a hard question because um, there's just so many good books to read. Uh, you can't really go wrong with reading from Harry Turodov, uh, specifically some of his older standalone works. Um, at the same time, uh, in terms of like, oh, this is such a hard question, but uh, yeah, I would. Turodov is a good place to start because he's done so much. Uh, again, what I would uh, also recommend, like some of the classics, like. Um, uh, Bring the Jubilee uh, by Ward Moore, or uh, The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick, because, you know, Dick's a household name in science fiction, so starting off with him getting into alternate history is not uh, that bad of an idea. Um, I did like The Peshawar Lancers by S.M. Sterling. I think that's a, a really good book if you uh, really want some great world building, you want to check that out. Um, oh, there's so many, there's so many good works to start off with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, uh, if you really don't want to just take my recommendations, just just Google Alternate History and start looking at some of the first things that come up, because those are the type of books that a lot of people have read and have discussed at length. So, uh, oh, um, like, in terms of, like, uh, specific um, turtle books, like uh, um, Rude Britannia, did I say that already? Oh, never mind, but I really like that book, so go check it out. So, uh, those are, yeah, those are some few suggestions that I have. Mapper... Paribaba asks, do you think that AH could help us build a better world? Absolutely. Uh, alternate history, I think at its heart, helps people think critically about history. Um, because you realize when you start changing history, you start to understand that uh, events don't really happen in a vacuum. If you change something on one end of the world, it can have a profound impact at the other end eventually. Um, also, as you change history, you also run into the issue that you kind of start noticing your own uh, misconceptions about history, uh, because you're, when you change history, you often share it with other alternate historians, and they'll tell you, well, that's impossible because of X, Y, and Z, and you only knew why, you only knew why, you didn't even know X and Z, and it helps you sort of like learn about areas of history you never did, and it helps in having a better grasp of history, better understanding of history, I think is especially important in this day and age when often people are quoting history to back their political positions sometimes and they're wrong and we need people who have who think critically of history to uh, not just correct them because oftentimes some of the, these people who um, quote history wrong are so sure that what they're wrong about is correct, that you're not really going to convince them, but we're not really setting out to convince them, we're setting out to convince the people who are listening to the conversation. And that's what's most important, and that's why we need historically his, historically literate people, uh, people who are knowledgeable about the past uh, in this world, because there's always going to be somebody who's going to warp history for their own ends, and having somebody who has this background of not just knowing history, but thinking critically of it, is going to make the world a better place, in my humble opinion. Sam McDonald asks, any plans to collaborate with other alternate historians like you did with Alexander Wallace? I would uh, love to collaborate with other alternate historians. In fact, there was uh, somebody I'm supposed to collaborate with, and I have been bad about uh, getting back to him. So um, if you are out there listening and you know who you are, I'm so sorry um, that I have been sort of, I dropped the ball on this one. Uh, I, as soon as I get some free time and this crazy uh, life that I leave, li li crazy life that I live, yikes, can't talk today, I will uh, take a look at what you sent me uh, and get back to you and hopefully we can actually get that collaboration we did talked about uh, together. Uh, now that that's over, yes, there's a bunch of people I would love to collaborate with. Not just alternate stories, but just people who talk history in general. Um, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to sound like a, oh, notice me, senpai. But it's more just like, uh, I, there's just so many really awesome YouTubers out there who uh, do such a great job at presenting history from both mainstream to obscure bits of it uh, that I would love to just hang out with them and talk. Let's <laughs> not make videos. Just talk and just see what it's like. Xavier Ford asks, have you ever read the novel Guns of the South? And what do you think happened after it ended? I did read the Guns of the South a very long time ago, and um, I actually don't remember it that well. That's why I was hesitating, because it's like, I know the details, but it's like, it was such a long time ago. It just, and it, even though it's one of people's, like, favorite alternate histories, it sort of didn't stick with me as much as some of uh, other Turtle Does works did. Um, even though it's probably one of his most famous. Uh, as for what happened, um, 
uh, in the future of that universe. I won't speculate uh, what I will do uh, because I recently saw a map that someone made uh, about like what happened 100 years after the events of the Guns of the South. So I will let uh, that person answer your question. So uh, keep a look out in the show notes where I'll keep a link to the map that you can check out and see because I thought it, the, the, I kept, the name escapes me, but I thought the, the alternate cartographer uh, did a really good job at, uh, at kind of like presenting a scenario. And uh, yeah, I want more people to go look at it. So yeah, look, uh, look for the link below uh, and you will get your answer hopefully. Andy Nikolai asks, who are your favorite map makers active in the AH community right now? Whew, uh, that's a difficult question just because there's so many good ones. Um, some of the names that come to mind, uh, Lynn Davis, Rebecca Sterling, uh, Bruce Monroe, RVB O'Malley, uh, Zach Sara. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and I'm sure there's, there's more. I just can't think of all of them, but there's so many good ones. And... Uh, it's such a it's such a great society. I love what they create, and I would love to see more people uh, get a chance to look at it. And, and I hope the you know right now a lot of my map videos that I've been making are sort of on famous alter history maps or just famous weird maps or whatever. But I do hope to also start getting in some more uh, modern maps uh, made by um, current creators in the field, uh, just because these guys are great, and I would love to get some get some eyeballs on them and if I can do it with my little channel then you know so be it that's awesome uh, but yeah it's 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 one of those skills uh, making alter history maps that I would love to be able to do myself but I don't have the patience or creativity so I just uh, stick with uh, making videos talking about how cool these people are but uh, hey whatever works you know do whatever <laughs> uh, play to your strengths <laughs> so yeah those are some of the people I uh, I like in the alter history map making community Colin Culkins asks, if you can go back and change anything you want, what would it be? I probably wouldn't change anything. Not because I think this timeline that we live in is perfect, far from it. It's more just because, you know, being an alternate historian, you sort of realize that while we make a lot of, we strive to make plausible predictions about alternate timelines, in the end, it's still just guesswork. And it's sprinkled a lot with creativity, and especially if you're trying to tell a story, you tend to will, you tend to sort of take the story where you want it to go rather than where it should go, uh, plausi plausibly speaking. And so it's impossible, I think, to know like even with the best intentions, you can go back and change the past and end up uh, essentially destroying everything you cared about. It's something I was trying to get across in my uh, Trope Talk No Hitler video, which is probably one of my more controversial videos. Uh, it, but it's that whole, like, I just you just never know that even if you set out to do something good to save lives, you could end up, you know, hurting people and costing more, even more people their lives. And you just, because you just don't know. And unless you can see the vast, you know, the vast multiverse at once so you can decide which is the best option, um, at that point, if you can do that, you're probably um, a god, and so what do you need uh, about changing history? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting very philosophical here for a second, but yeah, and um, I am, though, sort of happy that I'm not the only one who sort of has that sort of, like, thought process. Like, one of the things I liked about uh, Timeless, and maybe if Elaine and I ever uh, do another um, Thoughts on uh, one of their episodes, was in a recent episode, um, one of the characters... Uh, I, was this actually an episode that we covered? I can't remember what, which episode was the Civil War, but uh, I don't know if that was one we covered or not. Anyway, but you know, they, they one of the characters was like, you know, two of the characters want to save Lincoln because, you know, he's Lincoln and there's so much awful stuff that happened after his death, better that he was alive. And other character was like, no, because we don't know what's going to happen if things will, if we, how much we would screw up time. And, you know, as bad as the past is, at least it's ours and we have to protect it. I mean, sorry, bad as the present is, at least it's ours and we have to protect it. And I sort of like, I sort of agree with that statement, and I'm happy that I'm not the only one who saw it that way because it's just it's such a risky scenario that if I ever was given the power, I wouldn't use it. I might even destroy it, the the power, the, the device, whatever that lets me go back, just so that someone else doesn't use it because it's just way too risky. And I've seen people argue about how you could avoid paradoxes by the multiverse theory and quantum mechanics, which is clearly outside my you know brain power uh, right there. 
uh, and other things too, but it's just like, we don't know because technically time travel isn't supposed to work. Theoretically, it can't work. And all these people who talk about it, it's just... It's just talk, because we can never prove it unless given the option to do it, and because it's so risky, I'd rather just not. Um, I feel like the past has happened. It's better to change the present, or at least the future. And, yeah, uh, alternate history is a fun diversion, a fun form of escapism, but if given the option to ever create it, I probably would say no. Well then... <clears throat> I will end um, the 2,000 subscriber Q&A session here. Uh, thank you everyone for your questions. Thank you everyone for being a subscriber. If I didn't get to one of your questions for whatever reason, I'm sorry. Uh, feel free to email me uh, and I will hopefully ask them. But again, if there's, if there's specific what ifs or specific requests to review something, uh, I would ask that you please check out my uh, Patreon page and consider becoming one of my patrons because uh, that's probably the only way. I mean, I'll probably, I'm, I, I saved all the what-if questions and requests to review uh, in a document that I occasionally go to when I'm thinking of ideas for videos. So it's always possible that I might get to it eventually. But if you want me to get it to a lot sooner, uh, you would, should probably really consider becoming one of my patrons. So please go check out uh, my Patreon profile. I'll include it, a link to it in the show notes below. Uh, otherwise, yeah, thanks guys. It's, it's been fun and I can't wait to make more videos. I got some... A lot of good ideas coming up in the next few uh, weeks, months, years. Uh, so I hope to uh, hope to see you guys around for the 3,000 subscriber Q&A. Uh, with that said, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Bye.